In an article on welding race cars published in the American Welding Society's journal, I reviewed the welding of 4130 chromoly. It was based on suggestions made years before while managing a shielding gas and filler metals research and development laboratory. We received a call from a dragster chassis manufacturer who wanted a recommendation on filler rod selection. Being a car buff, my engineering staff and I discussed the request and reviewed the details of what they desired. They were using TIG welding and most of the joints employed fillet welds to join intersecting tubes of normalized 4130 chromoly. They preferred no preheat or post weld heat treatment. Considering the high strength of normalized 4130 and the fact that there would be no preheat, the best choice for this relatively high carbon alloy, as far as welding is concerned, it's high, was to use low carbon filler metal. When diluted into the much higher carbon 4130, it would reduce the chance of forming a brittle metallurgical structure in the deposit. An AWS ER70S2 alloy, shown in green, would also provide sufficient strength when diluted into the 4130. It would help resist the biggest concern, well cracking. The Dragster Frame Company not only selected the alloy, but a year later I saw in their catalog they offered ER70S2 filler metal for sale with their chassis kits. Although most folks consider the 70S2 alloy the best choice, some recommend a moly bearing wire since 4130 contains moly. However, note the alloy suggested has over twice the moly and much more manganese, which will create even higher strength than the normalized 4130. If that alloy is selected, there should be preheat used to minimize the chance of cracking. When the small TIG welds are made, they cool quickly from the molten metal temperatures. That quick cooling can form a metallurgical structure called martensite. This graph shows TIG welding cooling rates overlaid on Jomini cooling curves. Details about this graph are on our website. Note the base graphs are made for my master's thesis project well before computers in Excel. This is a transformation graph from a U.S. Steel Atlas. The continuous cooling diagram is presented in green. It shows that at TIG cooling rates, some brittle, very hard martensite will form. Much more on that subject on our website. One measure of how hard a material will become when cooled quickly is called critical diameter. The larger the value, the more hardenable. Note a weld made with ER70S2 when diluted in the 4130 tubing is less hardenable than 4130, but welds made with ADS-D2 could be much more hardenable. It is also important to make sufficiently large fillet welds to avoid cracking. Many welds observed in race car chassis and roll cages are very small and concave. This can lead to cracks at the weld edges or in the center line as the molten metal shrinks. Preferred shape is flat or even slightly convex. We generally think steel is tough. However, a martensitic structure can be as brittle as glass. If we were making a chisel, we would reheat the martensite to about 800 degrees and temper the structure. However, when fabricating structures such as chassis or roll cages from chromoly tubing, heating the finished part to these temperatures is just not practical. Some folks have used heat treated 4130 versus the normalized tubing typically used for chassis and roll cages. The strength can increase from 90 KSI to 150 KSI with this approach. However, it must be considered that the area close to the weld, called the heat affected zone, will reduce in strength when welded. In addition, the tempered martin site in the heat treated 4130 could contain some brittle constituents when reheated to a temperatures reached in the heat affected zone. The relatively high carbon 4130 chrome moly creates welding problems versus the more readily weldable low carbon steels. HY-130-150 steels were developed for Navy submarine construction. They not only are as strong as some heat treated 4130, they are more readily weldable, having only 0.12 carbon versus the 0.33 carbon in 4130. They are also very ductile, 
This picture shows a welded 4130 flat plate subjected to an explosive charge that formed this hat shape without cracking. Unfortunately, no one currently makes a low carbon alloy of this type in tubing form. Perhaps one of the racing bodies can work with one of the steel companies to commercialize the product. We get a number of questions about using heat treated 4130 or even 4340 to increase stiffness. Even a recent Car Enthusiast magazine discussed increased stiffness with higher strength materials. However, all steel has the same stiffness regardless of strength. This assumes that the amount of load does not cause the material to take a permanent set. For example, bridge designers are often limited by the amount a beam can deflect, so increased strength cannot be employed to make a beam lighter. To use higher strength to make a chassis stiffer, you can use a larger diameter tube, and to have lighter weight, the wall thickness can be made thinner. Our website goes into details about calculations to show some examples. However, making the tubes larger and thinner can be carried too far. A phenomena called failure by local buckling, or nicknamed the crush beer can effect, must be considered. A small dent or two ball defect can cause rapid failure. This may in fact be what caused the dragster failure shown earlier. More info on local buckling is on our website. Hydrogen cracking is a concern when welding higher strain steels. However, a clean TIG rod is essential when welding 4130 to achieve low hydrogen deposits. The section on filler metal cleanliness in AWS document C5.5 recommended practices for TIG welding states, before welding, a TIG rod should be wiped with isopropyl alcohol and checked for residuals. The cloth should show hardly any contamination. In addition to just checking, the rod can be cleaned prior to welding. Be sure the alcohol has time to evaporate before using. If using a TIG welding system with a gas solenoid, such as when employing foot or thumb current control, there is a blast of gas at the weld start. It not only wastes gas, but also causes air to be pulled into the shielding stream, affecting weld start quality and causing contamination of the tungsten electrode. Although most of our patented gas saver systems are used for MIG welding, we have a number of customers employing it for TIG. The patented gas saver system reduces the amount of excess start gas, improves start quality, while reducing shielding gas waste. It employs a custom extruded hose with a surge limiting orifice at the gas solenoid end. The gas saver system simply replaces the gas hose from gas supply to welder or TIG box. It reduces excess gas stored in the hose when welding stops by 80%. The peak flow limiting orifice does not affect your gas setting, just the maximum peak flow at the start. It retains the system pressure so some extra gas is available at the start at the right flow rate. You can reduce the annoying preflow time setting. It is simple and inexpensive. There are no moving parts to set, adjust, or maintain. For more information about welding 4130 chrome molly or about our patented gas saver system, visit www.netwelding.com. Thank you.